Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave Simons. Today I'm gonna to show you how to mount a camera on top of, say, a product so that it's looking straight down and you can see kind of the details of like an open case or something where you just need a different viewpoint of it. I'm gonna show you the stand, the boom arm, the little mounting accessories like this and this. Let's get after it. So the first thing is a C-stand. If you're a videographer or filmmaker, that is gonna be one of the first purchases you make beyond getting your camera because you're gonna need at least a key light to mount on something like this. Currently I have two C-stands and this, this one is from Impact. I got from B&H, it's about 150 bucks. Um, totally worth it. It is such a solid heavy duty thing. I have one that's a turtle base so you can actually work with different varying terrain. You can raise one of the legs so that it rests on say like a stair, whereas the other two legs are on a different level. And then the other one is just a fixed stand. Um, so I'm glad I have one of each. And then we got the boom arm here. So this is an 86 inch impact boom arm. It goes for about $100 on B&H. So worth it. This thing extends out, you know, seven feet. 86 inches, so that's how I've been able to extend my Aperture 300X all the way out into the living room without having this thing getting in the way of the walking space. When you do have a heavy light on it or camera, be aware that you are going to be using this little hook on the edge. You're gonna put a sandbag on here, which is another thing you're gonna need. So you're gonna hang it right here. You're gonna make sure this is tight. So it's gonna counterbalance whatever light or camera you have on the stud end. This is a 15 pound sandbag from B&H that was about 25 bucks, already came with sand in it. You can do this much cheaper on Amazon or any, anywhere else really. Um, if you buy the sand separately and buy four, usually they come in a minimum of four empty sandbags for like, five to ten dollars something like that and then you can buy like 50 pound sandbags elsewhere and then to mount your camera specifically to the end of this and this thing has a nice kind of rotating like half circle half moon thing and then you can fix it in any spot you want so I'm gonna do about right there looks right make sure that it's very tight two things you're gonna need to mount a camera at the very least you're going to want a stud with a 3 8 and quarter 20 female adapters on this thing. So you're gonna need the C-stand, the boom arm, you're gonna need a ball head from a tripod. So this was from like an 80 something dollar tripod, um, all aluminum, that's turned out to be a great purchase for photography. Um, make sure it's fairly solid and the load is like above eight pounds. Um, this says the load is only eight pounds fully extended, but if you use a sandbag, it's able to hold a lot more. I think they're just worried about the C-stands tipping over, which is never a good thing when that happens. That is terrifying. You don't have to have the ball head, but you really should for being able to perfectly position your shot so that it's straight down and it's just framed perfectly with the lines and everything. You're gonna need uh, the quarter 20, um, and 3 8 inch, both female and male adapters. What I'm gonna do is screw these two quarter 20s together, and then I'm going to plug in, plug in, screw in. The uh, 3 8 to any tripod head um, is going to have a 3 8 inch spot on the bottom. Spot on the bottom. Some plates have that on the top for heavier cameras, usually cinema cameras. Beyond that, you're gonna need this knuckle. They say it's like an umbrella holder, so it takes a stud on either side, um, which is one of these or these. So I'm gonna be able to put this right on here. So now it fits nice and flush with the bottom of this tripod head. Just make sure the 3 8 inch side is tight going into the tripod head. This way, you can just mount this right on here. So let's bring this, bring this around. Make sure it goes all the way on. This has a little kind of rough edge here. So make sure to screw it on to the flat side. And then also, ideally, you would want um, to just avoid having to screw with this end of it. So Manfrotto makes these uh, 208 3 8 inch head mounting plate with lock screws. 
So this gives you a stud on the bottom and then a plate for you to mount your tripod head to. So that is ideal. That way you have a more secure connection between the umbrella holder and the tripod head. We are good to go. It is all mounted. Ed is feeling nice and sturdy. And of course, we're gonna pop off our plate. Get this guy on there. I always like to make sure I have a nickel nearby, which I don't this time. Not as good as a nickel, but it works. Throw this baby on there. Put that sandbag on there. Right on there. We got our Canon 7D set up on the boom arm. Might even use my phone for uh, some of this. We got our C-stand. We have the sandbag down there on the tallest leg, which I always like to have opposite of the weight on the boom arm. Instead of putting it on this hook, we put it on that back leg. The Canon 7D is a pretty light camera and all mirrorless cameras are pretty light as well. So it just kind of makes more sense to put it on the leg. If you do need a direct and like equal counterbalance, like I do for the Aperture 300X, that thing is heavy. So I like to put it on the actual hook on the boom arm. We're gonna bring in the product I wanted to display. So we're gonna make sure that this is a little bit higher lock that guy off we're going to extend the arm just a bit and then when you have the camera centered over your product or object then it's all about fiddling with the ball head and then you can get that in place so you have like kind of limitless customization and then you tighten it on up and it's good to go so we're looking at the edelkrone head plus inside the nanuk 930 case I also quickly realized that this was way too far of a focal length at 50 millimeters hanging down only probably four feet from the table. So I switched on my Rokinon 14 millimeter manual focus lens. So to make sure everything's good and that I like the angle up there, uh, I'm using my phone to get above the camera and make sure it's pointed at the right spot. That looks pretty good to me from here. Again, might not be perfect. And ideally you would have some sort of monitor attached um, that would feed through down a wire down the boom pole and then you can watch it comfortably But I don't have that and that's okay. So you got to get creative Looking right down into the case. We got the Edelkrone head plus and so I'll be able to you know store like lenses like this and plenty of other spots and Have it still close nicely. So I do love this case. It is great can store batteries in this section right here. Definitely recommend the Nanuk 930 and the Edelkrone Head Plus. And basically all this impact C-stand and boom arm equipment, um, small rig for those that small hardware that you gotta get to make everything connect to each other. All right, so I hope this covers everything you need to start getting those bird's eye view shots. Gear wise, technique wise, if you found this video helpful, please drop a like. Leave a comment. Let me know what kind of thing you want to use, you know, this, this video for. Like, what do you want to use the bird's eye view camera shot for? Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.